moral subjectivism is not the same as moral relativism. They share an underlying belief about the source of morality, but they are different beliefs. Let's take morality out of it for a second. We will bring it back in. If you are a relativist, you think that the truth depends on a culture, a community, a group like a religious group or a political group, group or the group of people who like music, any kind of group. It's the group, the community, the nation, the religion that comes up with what the truth is. And in relativism, no community is somehow superior to another. So for example, think about whether 60 degrees is warm or if it's cold. If you live in Los Angeles, you and everybody you know thinks that 60 degrees is cold. But if you live in St. Louis, you and everybody you know thinks that 60 degrees is warm and beautiful. So who's right? Relativism says they are both right. That the truth is literally whatever the people say it is. Well, here's another similar but different idea. Subjectivism. In subjectivism, if I'm cold and you're hot and we're wearing the same clothes in the same room at the same time, who's right? A subjectivist would say, we're both right. If I feel cold, it is cold. And if you feel hot, it is hot. The weather is somehow describable as both hot and cold at the same time in the same room. Because here, the truth is just whatever the subject, the person, says it is. Now, let's bring morality into it. Think of some actions that might be right or wrong. Lying, cheating, donating, laughing. Well, are those actions ethical, moral, permissible, okay, righteous? How do we know? What's the source? What is the source of morality? What makes lying good or what makes lying bad? The way you answer that question is the way to determine whether you're a moral relativist, a moral subjectivist, or something else. Moral relativism and moral subjectivism share this belief in common. It's called moral anti-realism. Moral anti-realism is the claim that morality is mind-dependent, that what is right and wrong, what is good and bad, what is moral and immoral, depends on a mind, on a mentality. So here are your two options if you are a moral anti-realist. You can be a moral subjectivist if you think that morality depends on your mind as a subject, but you might think that morality depends on the community, on the group, on the time, on the nation, on the religion. So you are a moral relativist if you think that what's right and wrong depends on the culture, on the tradition. Now these are not the only two options, but notice that they both agree, these two views both agree in moral anti-realism, they both agree that there are no real facts about right and wrong. Facts about right and wrong come from humans. Ethics, morality, is a human construct. There is no absolute truth. There is no universal truth. The truth is whatever I say it is. The truth is whatever we say it is. Those are not the only ways that you could go. Think again about what you think is right and wrong. Think again about the source of morality. What is moral and immoral is mind dependent if you're a moral relativist or a moral subjectivist. That means you believe in moral anti-realism. But here is a different view. You could also be a moral absolutist or a moral objectivist if you believe in moral realism. Moral realism is the opposite of moral anti-realism that believes that uh, morality is mind independent, mind dependent, Moral anti-realism is the view that morality is mind-dependent. If, on the other hand, you think that morality is mind-independent, you think that if I say some act is right and you say that same act is wrong, one of us has to be wrong because the truth about whether that action is good or bad, right or wrong, does not depend on what I think and it does not depend on what you think. It's kind of like math. A moral realist, a moral absolutist or moral objectivist, thinks that ethics is just like arithmetic. What's the answer to 7 times 8? Well, if I say it's 56 and you say it's 78, one of us has to be wrong. There is a truth 
to what is seven times eight. And the truth doesn't depend on how I feel or how you feel or how anybody feels. The truth about what seven times eight equals is mind independent. Seven times eight is 56 for your great, great grandma. Seven times eight is 56 for your great, great granddaughter. If you're black or if you're white, if you're skinny, if you're fat, if you're old, if you're young, the truth about seven times eight does not depend on anyone's mind, on any nation, on any religion, on any political idea. It doesn't depend on any human. Seven times eight is 56, and that doesn't depend on any human. That's what mind independent means. It means that the truth does not depend on any humans. Imagine every human died. Is seven times eight 56? Yes. In theory, seven times eight is 56. That's what it means to believe in moral realism, to say that ethics is like that. If lying really is wrong, then even if there were no human beings to lie, lying would still be wrong. But coming back to moral relativism and moral subjectivism, if every human being died, then lying would not be wrong. Lying is only wrong if some mind concludes that it is. Morality is what some mind says it is. So the difference here is whose mind we are thinking about. But the real main point here is that if you are a moral relativist or a moral subjectivist, we don't know what's good and what's bad unless we have a point of view from which to evaluate the action.